Good evening everyone, my name is Celeste LaCabra, welcome back to my channel. I was not planning on shooting a video today, but for reasons that I hope are self-evident, I just had to come down here and turn on the camera while I'm on my lunch break here and talk about this. Um, so I got an email earlier today from Criterion, and I went to open it, and what do I see but the cute little robot from Wally -E <laughs> staring me in the face, and I thought to myself, have I gone crazy? Is it April? Is it April 1st today? Is it not September? But alas, twas no joke. <laughs> Disney Pixar's Wally -E is coming to the collection November 22nd in 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray disc. Yes, it was really happening. I feel as though I have just learned that aliens have landed on the earth or like the smiths are reuniting or something like that just like something so unbelievable that you never thought it would happen and yet there it is staring you in the face so i guess now that i've kind of expressed my initial shock and hopefully i could get over it in the course of this video um i guess i want to talk about the details of the announcement and of the release itself and what i think this means for criterion and for physical media moving forward so real quick, let's talk about the disc. Um, now I have the Disney Pixar Studio 4K. I have it with this nice slip on it. Same artwork. Um, mine's kind of dinged up, but that's okay. <laughs> now I went over the special features on this again. This has the Presto short film and just deleted scenes and like a bunch of featurettes for you know making up purposes and stuff. But the Criterion Edition is absolutely stacked. Like, okay, first it's a 4K disc, right? And it comes with Dolby Vision, which the Disney releases have not been including. I personally don't have Dolby Vision capability, but I know this is a big deal for a lot of people and would be worth the double dip alone. But for me, it's obviously, I mean, I wanna support this move. I wanna have this in my collection, but I also want all these special features that they've announced. Um, there is a full length documentary on the history of Pixar from 2007 that's included. Um, one of the director's student films is included as well, and the Presto short film is there. In addition to, I think what it said, 10 featurettes, featurette documentaries on the making of the film, which I assume are included on this disc, um, there's also going to be new conversations and like video essays um, talking about the impact of the film, the themes of the film, and the importance of the film. So it just, they pulled out all the stops, and I cannot wait to see what the packaging looks like. And I don't know, to be honest, how it's going to feel to put wally like here <laughs> next to you know in my criterion collection that is just absolutely insane to me but it's the world we're living in apparently <laughs> i wonder if this is why the november announcements were so late is because they were hoping to finalize this pixar deal so they could drop what is to me the biggest physical media bombshell of the whole year and i honestly don't think it's close is it it's going to be like next to malcolm x right in terms of the spy numbers it's going to be like in between malcolm x and the infernal affairs trilogy just, just fucking wild yeah so i'm assuming this is going to be like a big digipack release i think it's going to be pretty cool looking and i'm just so excited to get it in my hands come november um dropping it during sale month so uh that's another thing i should say it retails at 50 dollars. so uh, when it comes out it'll be 25 and it'll hover around that price probably indefinitely uh on amazon and places like that so i double checked and the studio release is like 17 dollars on amazon right now so really not much of a price increase for the upgrade in packaging the upgrade in dolby vision and the upgrade in supplements and additional booklets um so yeah if you're a wally -E fan get your hands on this thing so other than the new second side edition of the wish i think this is one of maybe two or three times that i've ever had to upgrade a 4k that's just not something that really happens a lot i personally do really like the film i have my problems with it i think some of its thematic implications are certainly problematic but i think visually it's so beautiful and i think the characters are really cute and really sweet and i do think that it is kind of like a landmark film for animation and for children's films in general. I think it certainly deserves its place in the collection and I'm just so excited that this is happening. What's even more interesting and even more important to me, which is what I want to talk about now, is the the implications that this has for Criterion and for physical media in general. Um, so a few points I want to make about that. Uh, so for Criterion specifically, this really I think goes to show just the extent 
that that um, name recognition and that prestige that Criterion offers, um, you know, offers to studios that even like the biggest studio on earth, Disney, Pixar, you know, is willing to lend out their IPs and let Criterion put out their films. I don't, I can't think of another boutique label that would get away with this. Like Kino has been getting some pretty big gets, but not fucking Pixar movies, you know? Yeah, I think it just goes to show the the power of the name recognition and of the quality of Criterion's releases where like nothing is off the table now. That's just really the main point I want to get at is that nothing is off the table in terms of what will get a Criterion release. I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable and I can make a pretty educated guess as to what is safe to buy now and what I want to hold out to see if Criterion will put it out. Uh, all my rules are broken. Everything's out the window. Like, if fucking Wally, a Pixar film, can get into the Criterion Collection, I mean, I, I just, there's no ceiling to it. I, I think anything could happen, you know? We could get, like, Star Wars, or Lord of the Rings, or any number of huge, massive films could be getting a Criterion Edition, which is crazy to think about. But I wonder how far they're going to take it in terms of adding these really, really big titles to their collection, you know, um, because it would be disappointing, right, if Criterion just kind of turned into a fancier version of the big studios and just started putting out all the Disney films and, you know, those other titles that I mentioned and just really big stuff like that and kind of lost their focus on foreign films and classic Hollywood and art house and all the stuff that we love them for. I mean, it would still be cool and it would be the version to get, but it would be disappointing. But I really don't think that's going to happen. I think that uh, they're going to take their wins where they can get it. They're going to select films that make sense, that they feel are important, and that they feel are in line with their brand and with their mission statement. But again, I mean, really, all bets are off. I don't, I don't know what, what else they have up their sleeve, but I know that one thing that people are really excited about is David Lynch's The Straight Story, because that's a Disney title and doesn't have an American release. Now... I did buy this imprint edition because there's no way to get it in the United States. Um, I haven't watched it yet, to my great shame, but I do own it. However, if Criterion puts one out in 4K or in Blu-ray, I, I will buy it again. Um, you know, we'll have to see about the special features difference to see and uh, compare if it's worth having both. But this is available, but now the door's open. Like, I, I feel like it's going to happen. I think there's a fairly good chance from what I've heard uh, from the David Lynch camp uh, they're really gunning to put everything out on Criterion, and I think it's going to happen. So what does this mean for physical media in general? I think it is a really kind of, I think it's a very clear harbinger of the fact that physical media is a collector's market at this point. Um, your average person doesn't give a shit and will watch these films on Netflix, on Disney+, Plus, or if they're not on streaming, they don't care and they just won't watch them. Uh, this is tragic to me, but... It is the way of the world, and the writing's been on the wall for some time now that physical media is never going to be what it used to be. What it is going to be, however, is specially catered to collectors like us. And to me, that's wonderful, because we're getting prestige, just stunning releases with lovingly crafted special features for films that you never would have expected. They're pulling shit out of the vault that just never would have saw the light of day 10, 15 years ago, you know? But the one big holdout and any physical media enthusiast will tell you this, is Disney. Disney always puts out a bare bones release of their new releases on 4K and on Blu-ray, generally, sometimes not even 4K. But for the catalog stuff, for the 20th Century Fox catalog, which they, you know, so, so Disney has purchased 20th Century Fox. So that's, a, that's, an, that's an enormous library of films that they just are sitting on. And so far, I think Heat and Speed are the only two catalog releases that Disney has put out in 4K. But the work had already been done on those films before the acquisition, so they were essentially just sitting on a new transfer and obviously it made sense to put those out. But new restorations and new releases are just not happening in terms of catalog stuff. So the idea that that entire vault is now open um, to new Blu-ray and 4K releases because they've actually opened the door to like letting really big titles be handled by companies like Criterion. Um, I mean, are we gonna see the straight story? Are we going to see Martin Scorsese's Bringing Out the Dead finally get a Blu-ray release? I mean, the, the possibilities are really just endless. I hope I'm not like getting too excited here and it's not, it, it's not just like, I don't know, maybe the director really pushed for this or something or they wanted to try it out and then it doesn't work out. 
But I don't know. It seems to me like Disney has finally loosened the iron grip that they have on their catalog <laughs> and have let the boutiques kind of get in on it and um, provide a really special deluxe edition for collectors. I just, I think that this is really unprecedented and I think it's going to be really exciting and it can only mean good things for physical media, for Criterion and for film preservation in general. So get excited. Um, I'm gonna link in the description where you can pre-order it on Criterion's site and there you can read about all the special features. Um, I'm not gonna link the Amazon, you can find that yourself, um, but I will link Criterion's site. Um, I hope, I mean, I can't imagine it won't be, but I hope that this will be a big seller for them and that this will open a lot of doors and make a lot of collectors really happy with the things that are to come. So yeah, lots to be excited about. Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to touch upon today, but if I left anything out, I'll try to leave a comment or something like that. Uh, I let this is a really good opportunity for discussion. So in the comments, please tell me what you think about this and tell me what in the Disney Buena Vista and uh, 20th Century Fox catalogs you would like to see unearthed and released on Criterion or maybe another label. Like maybe they're testing the waters of Criterion and then Kino's gonna get a stab at it or something like that. This seems like Criterion is the one who, who can make the deal. So uh, yeah, I mean, the possibilities are really pretty limitless. So I wanna, you know, let's get wild in the comments here. Give me your best, uh, your, your biggest pipe dreams. <laughs> give me reasonable predictions, whatever you wanna give me, let's talk about it in the comments. Um, also in the description, you can find links to my letterbox, my Instagram, and my Rate Your Music accounts. If you like in-depth discussions on films and on physical media, um, film preservation, film analysis, things like that, stick around, subscribe to the channel. Um, I put up, I try to put up at least a few videos a week. Please like the video so others can find it and find my channel. And uh, yeah, that's all for me today. Hail Criterion, hail cinema, hail Satan. <laughs>